In lab number two, we're going to continue to build a digital color organ. This week, we're going to assemble the microphone amplifier, the line input summer, a low pass filter, and an LED output. The microphone amplifier uses an electrical microphone. This is the same type of microphone that was embedded into the noise canceling headphones that we uh, built and played with in ECE203 lab. There's a JFET amplifier inside here, and we need to provide a DC voltage and a limiting current resistor. The op amp that we're going to be using in this experiment is an LM324. This is a quad op amp, in other words, four op amps in one chip. And it also can use a single ended supply, in other words, five volts here and zero. LM741 that we used in the 203 lab required a dual supply, typically did plus and minus 15. Now, since our music and sound can swing positive and negative, we need to bias the op amp in the middle of the power supply. We're going to do that with these resistors R3 and R4. For DC, this is an open circuit, and of course there's no current in an input of an op amp. So we'll pick these two resistors to be equal, and we'll be biasing this at about 2.5 volts. Now with feedback, the voltage across here is zero. Okay, so we've got 2.5 volts here back to ground. But for DC, there's no current coming in here. Likewise, no current coming in here, and no current coming in or out of here. So the current that flows in R5 is also zero. So we'll have zero drop across this resistance, and then I'll make this node voltage also two and a half volts. So basically all of our signals will be riding on a two and a half volt DC level. The capacitor C4 that's shown here is chosen large enough such that the impedance at 20 hertz or higher is much, much smaller than the impedance of these resistances, R3 and R4. So basically what we're letting is DC pass here, but blocking all AC frequencies. Likewise, I'm going to pick this capacitor C1 so that it's large enough so that at audio frequencies, this would be 20 hertz or higher, it looks pretty much like a short circuit compared to R2. The capacitor C3 here is chosen small enough so that it looks like an open circuit for audio frequencies. In other words, the impedance of this capacitor is much, much greater than the value of R5 uh, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The reason it's here is that as the frequency gets higher, this is above the audio band, it begins to look like a short circuit. I'm just gonna limit the overall bandwidth of this circuit when you do that, you lower the overall noise. Now in the audio band, if this looks like an open circuit, and this looks like a short circuit, then the gain of this circuit is the value of R5 divided by R2 with a minus sign. It's an inverting amplifier. But the actual formula for the impedance versus frequency is really these two in parallel divided by these two in series. Also notice there's a capacitor here, C2, added at the power supply. This is like what we did in the 203 and 303 lab to stop uh, power supply oscillations. On page three is our next circuit. It's called the line input summer. We're gonna use this as an audio input. This could be your MP3 player or iPod or even the PC and lab, bringing in a source of music. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add those two channels and create a single channel output, really like the stereo monaural conversion we did in uh, 203 lab. This op amp two, we need to bias uh, halfway between the power supply rails. Here we got five volts and zero. We're going to put two, two equal resistors again, and we're going to lift this voltage up to two and a half volts. With feedback, I've got no voltage across here, no current coming in here, so no drop across here. So it's sitting at two and a half volts. There's no current coming in, no current from here, therefore there's no current here, and so there's no drop here, and we'll see again two and a half volts here. So again, everything's riding on a two and a half volt signal. I'm going to pick these capacitors large enough so that they look like short circuits for frequencies greater than 20 hertz. Likewise, we're going to pick this capacitor small enough that it looks like an open circuit uh, in the audio band of frequencies. Again, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So roughly our gain at audio frequencies is going to be our 8 over R6 with a minus sign. It's an inverting amplifier. And then likewise, our 8 over R7. So it's a summing amplifier, again, like we did in the 203 lab. But the actual impedance is what we're going to be seeing in lab. We may have you measure the frequency response of, of this amplifier in the previous one. And of course, the impedance here is these two in parallel divided by these two in series, and then the other gain is this in parallel divided by these two in series. That's really what you're gonna be measuring in lab. The next circuit we're gonna build is called a low pass filter. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna limit the range of frequencies that are coming in. We're gonna do this because of the sampling frequency that we're doing for our digital part of the circuit. We don't need to bias this op amp at two and a half volts because what's coming in here is the output of either the microphone amplifier or the line input summer. They both have a two and a half volt offset. For DC, this is an open, so there's no current here. This is also an open, so there's no current here. 
The op amp doesn't allow any current to go in here. So then there's no current in this resistance, no current in this resistance. So the drop across 11 and 12 would be zero times their values. And so this node voltage is the same as this node voltage, which is two and a half volts for DC. No voltage cross here, and therefore this is two and a half volts. Take a look at how this filter begins to work. So at DC, we obviously were passing the signal. As the frequency begins to increase, the same things are still true. The impedance of these capacitors are high, and we're basically drawing no current and the output equals the input. But as frequency increases, the impedance of this capacitor begins to decrease, and the voltage here is the current that's flowing in here times one over SC9. So this is going smaller as the frequency goes up. But one other thing is also happening here. This capacitor too is beginning to short these two nodes together. So the voltage across this resistance is equal to roughly V8, but V8 is the same as V10. So the voltage across here is getting smaller and smaller as frequency goes up. And that current then multiplies by this impedance of one over SC9. So you've got two things that are pulling you down versus frequency. So we'll see this has a roll off of minus 40 dB per decade. We'll see roughly how this filter works without equations. But let's go to the next page and let's see if we can derive some of the formulas for this circuit and be able to calculate some of the parameters of its performance. With op-amp circuits, it's usually easier to do uh, node analysis. So let me number all the nodes here. I'll call this one, two, and three. And because of feedback here, V2 is the same as the output, so I'll call that just V2. And I can sum the currents at any of these nodes, but what I've got here is a voltage source, and I don't know what the current is coming out of it. And this is also a kind of a voltage source. It's a voltage control voltage source. I don't know the current there, so I'm going to sum the currents at nodes that don't have a voltage source hooked up to it. This node three, let's sum the currents. Now I actually made all the currents leave the node. So the current in this direction and this direction, I have to sum up to zero. So what's the current going this way? Well, it's this node voltage V3 minus V1 divided by R11 or times G11. The current in this resistance is V3 minus V2 divided by R12 or times G12. And then the current going in here is V3 minus V2 divided by one over SC10. We'll just be multiplying by SC10. Now let, let's put on this side of the equation, uh, really our input here, which has got the G11 times V1. And let's group all the things that multiply V2 and V3. So here I've got this term and I've got uh, this term over here. And I've got G11 times V3 and G12 times V3 and then SC10. This is my one equation, two unknowns. Even though I don't specify the input here, we treat it as an unknown. Okay, let's go to the second node here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to actually let the currents leave the node and just set it equal to zero. A lot of ways you could do this, but so this current plus this current plus this current has to equal zero. Okay, the current going the op amp is zero, so just have these two currents. This is V2 minus V3 divided by R12, or times G12. So the current in here is V2 minus V0 divided by 1 over SC9, or just times SC9. Okay, let's just kind of group things together here, things that multiply V2 and V3. So V2, I've got a G12, and I've got SC9, and V3, I've got a minus G2. V3 times G12. Oops, left off a of 1 here. You could correct it, that'd be great. Okay, so let's take our first equation, which is G11 times V1, and then I've got this term times V2, and I've got this term times V3, and I can get V3 from here. Put this on the other side of the equation, to solve for V3, then it's going to be equal to this times V2, and then divided by G12. So we can find a common denominator here and put all this stuff together. So I'll multiply this by G12, and that's what these two terms are here, and then I've got this times this. Let's solve for V2 now. So I'll take the reciprocal of this, put it on your side of the equation. So here's that term divided by this, and then I'm gonna cross multiply by the G11, put it up over here. Let's look at the algebra, but there's some terms that cancel here, and I'm left with, this is my transfer function. Now it's a little hard to work with conductances, so let's just replace these by the resistance value, and let's get rid of this term, divide numerator and denominator by it. Let's just look at the algebra, but this is what the results that I get. This is the form of a low-pass second-order filter. We talked about these in ECE203, and we actually solved for omega naught and Q naught in lab 7. So take a look at that, and you can see what controls these parameters and how that affects your filter.